all response that we're having. Yeah, so some some of us are moving away from talking about the endocannabinoid system and really talking about the endocannabinoid norm, right? Because we do now, 2019, moving to 2020, know that the endocannabinoid system is much bigger than these four core components that we often talk about, like the cannabinoid receptors, the endogenous cannabinoids, and the enzymes that create them, and the enzymes that break them down. It's much more varied and nuanced than that, and not only that, our endocannabinoids work on many other receptor systems. So we're, we we used to only call CBD the promiscuous molecule because it works on 65 unique and counting receptors and other enzyme targets, but really all phytocannabinoids do, and also our endocannabinoids. Um, so anyways, the system is not just the system, it's, I mean, it's a whole universe inside of our body, and we do not yet know if there's something even that we are constantly in flux, right? Our endocannabinoid system tone can change depending on a whole host of circumstances. But its, its purpose is balance, homeostasis. So it has to work, you know, when needed and wherever it needs to in the body to re-regulate, right? And so we commonly describe the, how, how that retrograde function works. I don't have my charts and things. I was afraid to do my best. Um, using the example of a nerve synapse, right? You have a presynaptic nerve and a postsynaptic nerve, and that presynaptic nerve is sending signals of, you know, stress, inflammation, pain, whatever, to that postsynaptic nerve. What is supposed to happen under healthy conditions is that postsynaptic nerve, right, in that nerve is produced our endogenous cannabinoids that are supposed to be released and bind to a cannabinoid receptor, the presynaptic terminal, and shut that signaling off, right? to maintain that. So uh, the way we like to describe it is if, if, if those signals are ongoing and apparent signals of pain, inflammation, and stress, yes, the body needs to have an innate mechanism to shut it off so that we don't now have chronic pain, chronic stress, chronic inflammation, which unfortunately is what's happening, right? That's, that's what we believe is at the root cause of endocannabinoid system dysfunction. It's sort of a dysregulation, but we're causing it. You should have that on the Thank you. Can you comment on how many cannabinoids you should give? Oh, there's, there's hundred, over 100, maybe 140 phytocannabinoids, right? Endogenous cannabinoids, we don't really have that number yet. We know that there's more than CB1 and CB2 receptors, three, four, five. Um, we know that there are secondary endocannabinoids, all their fun, fun, funky names. Um, like I said, this system 